The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the DAX. As you can see, we've had a little bit of a movement to the upside, but actually quite muted. It really didn't do very much at all. Uh, one of the things that we want to be looking at today is to see how the market's going to follow through because we did uh, make a uh, ABCD pattern in the uh, NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and the E-mini S&P. I'll cover that in just a minute. But first, of course, I would like to go on and talk a little bit about the FTSE because it's under a lot of news and everything. And you're also, when you take a look at the FTSE, you're also going to see a uh, really nice uh, ABCD pattern that completed with a looks like a hanging man candle up there at the 61% retracement hit it exactly and immediately sold off 75 pips so uh, that's a uh, pretty significant pattern now the other one that I do want to mention to you because we were just chatting about it is the ABCD that we had in the NASDAQ I want to get this up here so that you'll be able to take a quick look at it You'll notice here that we did make the ABCD. Then in the middle of the night, there was a news item. I don't know exactly what it was because I was helping the elves prepare Santa's presents. And uh, we got up to 67.10, and we've sold off uh, quite a bit. We're still I – would, I would suspect there will be some really strong support down about – uh, another 80 points in the NASDAQ down around that 6580 and also support in the S&P somewhere around uh, 26, uh, probably that 2650 level would be my guess if there should be some some port in here because this was a what we think was a pretty significant, pretty significant bottom. Now, I wanted to chat just a little bit uh, about uh, this stock that someone mentioned in the uh, at the very end of the show yesterday, uh, it was called OSTK, and, and I know that I went in and I Googled it, and it's overstock, but evidently uh, they have um, did something with blockchain. Either they accepted the uh, Bitcoin or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but if you'll notice… Uh, it has the same pattern that the Bitcoin does. I mean, it really does. This is that big ABCD, as you can see there, on the downside. Now, it's not exactly like Bitcoin. There's some differences. But the, the thing that's similar is the fact that you had the three drive to a top pattern coming in in January, exactly when it was hitting just under 20000 on Bitcoin, when it was uh, listed on the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And in almost 11 months, I think it has just a little over 3,000 contracts, which is not very good for a, a beginning product, but you'll notice that the pattern is exactly the same as it is in Bitcoin. If you look at Bitcoin, you don't quite see it as clearly here because of the fact that uh, it's squeezed a little bit, but believe me, there is a three-drive pattern present in the uh, the Bitcoin up there at that uh, 19,050 level, so 19,500, and now you see that we're down to this level here. Our original target on this was 3,800. Uh, in the thing, we've got down to, to 3,200, but I don't know if that 3,200 is really valid because at that point, there there was really no market going on in it. There really wasn't. There, the, the spread was like 300 and 300 bucks uh, to buy or sell. But lately, uh, where we are trading right now, the spread on this is only uh, 50, only 50 share, 50 dollars a share. So when you're trading something that's 3,700 with a 50 dollar uh, spread, that is really uh, pretty much spot on. That's that's really pretty close. So we'll see uh, we'll see what's going. David's telling us that uh, something about the uh, OSTK. Uh, the only reason I'm looking at it is it mimics the uh, Bitcoin. It it really does. I I don't know what uh, overstock. Does. Does I, I guess they sell overstock products? They're a retailing company, but frankly, you know, I don't really, I don't really know for sure. Now, folks, to, on the twenty. Uh, by the way, we're going to have Samuel Archibald Arrington Hicks Crawford, Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspective, is going to be on our guest.
today at uh, 7.30, this, uh, 9.30 this morning. And we'll be always glad to listen to what he has to talk about it. And Terry, thank you very much for bringing that up because I wanted to know who was that said that. But I'm going to find a little more out about it today when I chat with John Jameson over in the uh, across the pond over there in the UK. And we'll get a little better idea of what's uh, what's going on. But it really mimics the Bitcoin. So that might be a way of trading Bitcoin. I have no idea why it looks that way. But it's uh, we'll see. We'll, we're we're going to check that out just for educational purposes. Now, uh, on the 28th of November, on Wednesday, there is a very, very unusual day in the markets, cyclically speaking. This is a day where there's no aspects on the astrological calendar. This is extremely rare. Uh, it goes out into the, uh, when we first did this work, uh, looking at the number of aspects, you know, 14 or more or three or less. Uh, we did that work way back in 1986 with Twentyman and uh, Dr. Ruth Miller. And uh, it showed that if you have 14 or more or three or less, it's a really strong indication of some major cycle stuff coming on. And with zero aspects, that is really, uh, really unusual. So we're going to watch that closely tomorrow because it's a it's a big P-index date. Now, the P-index was a uh, uh, something that we put in the book because we did a lot of research on it and it worked really good. And I presented that research to Frank Tauscher of the Super Traders Almanac back there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 30 some years ago. Frank was single handedly one of the three best traders that I personally ever met in my lifetime. Uh, Amos Hostetter being one, and uh, Frank Tauscher uh, being another one. And the third one will not allow me uh, to say his name, but uh, those three were the best that I had. Have, uh, I have ever seen. They they were the best of anything that, uh, I mean, Frank used to enter these contests where you uh, put up uh, $25,000 with the play money and then you go against 500 or so traders. He put up real money. And every Every contest that he that he went into, he made 400 percent more than the second place, and it was with real money, not with not with uh, not with paper trading. So after about six or seven of those, he uh, just didn't even bother to go into it anymore. He was very very humble fellow, extremely religious. Uh, lived in Tulsa, and one day he and his son were walking out to lunch, and uh, stopped at the stoplight. And his son turned, and his dad wasn't there. And he looked down, and his dad had a tremendous uh, aortic aneurysm, and he was he he was gone before his eyes could blink, and that was it. Anyway, but he was a fabulous trader, and he wrote that Super Troll Trader's Almanac for many things, many years, and he really liked that um, that P-index date. He put that in there all the time, and uh, he, he was the one that actually made it you know, very, very popular. We haven't talked about it much here, but the fact that there's only zero aspects tomorrow, let's watch, because there should be some, there should be some pretty good volatility and some pretty good uh, trend changes uh, on that, but uh, it's extremely small. I know um, Steve Rhodes has carried on the uh, the P index thing, which is uh, really good because he does a lot of great cycle work too. So we'll watch it. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, of course. But uh, use it in conjunction with patterns, and you usually come out better than uh, than if you don't do anything at all. The patterns, you know, they really give you the guideline of you know risk control. And that's what we're really trying to do here. 877-927-6648. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, we're back, folks, and we're taking a look here at the couple of long-term charts here because I believe they're uh, very, very important. You notice this is the soybean oil chart. We're down near what we think could be a double bottom here in soybean oil. If you'll notice the yellow triangle that is there that shows the head and shoulders pattern very clearly, uh, Mr. Z was asking this morning about how my daughters used to cut those out. I used to get the commodity perspective charts by uh, special delivery on Saturday morning, and then I would do my charts all day Saturday and Sunday in preparation for trading on Monday. And when I was finished with the old charts, and I, I kept them for years and years, uh, Laren or Jill would go into the uh, one of the charts and uh, where I'd marked up all the patterns and stuff, and they would cut it out with their little plastic scissors, and they would color them in, and then they would put them on the uh, refrigerator, and they looked like little butterflies. It wasn't until, see, that was in the 70s. I mean, it wasn't until probably 10 years later that I met Bryce Gilmore that it you know, started to come together with all the relations of the Fibonacci ratios and all the other stuff that it finally uh, came to. When I lived there in Westlake Village that just got, made it through that fire there that was in Thousand Oaks in, in Southern California, when I moved into uh, Westlake Village, I believe it was 66, 66 or 67, uh, one of the, 66, I think, uh, either 66 or 67. My phone number, uh, believe it or not, folks, was 889-1618. And I didn't have any idea about Fibonacci at that time. So you talk about something trailing you around in your life, that's certainly it. The next chart, I believe, is extremely important, and that is the... A chart of the long-term monthly chart on silver going back to 2011. Remember, silver got down to uh, $4 an ounce back in 2001, and uh, we went all the way up to make a double top 
to 50 bucks an ounce that we had, you know, way back in that. So we'll see that uh, is amazing. Hey, that's Mr. Z's birthday is 618. We're going to remember that one, Bubba. Very good, Mr. Z. Hey, you're, you must be followed around by it, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, let's uh, look at this. Look at this silver on the monthly chart, folks. We hit that. We hit that monthly bottom back in 2015, and we rallied from 14, well, 1385 up to a little above uh, $20 an ounce. And then we've come down. And look look what's happened, folks, over the last three months. Uh, we went down there, and we've tested 1385 for the third time. Uh, we're trading uh, you know, below the price that you see here, which is 1426 today. If we close below 1385, with any gusto, you know, like at 1365 or lower, uh, this is going to tell us that uh, silver's not finished going down because uh, it really has a lot of support at 1385. And if it doesn't hold that support, that is going to be very negative uh, to silver and probably the rest of the precious metals. But again, that's my. Uh, that's my my two cents worth. Now the next one that I wanted to talk about on the long term basis, because we're affected by quite a bit of it. You know, we'll see. Uh, we'll take a look at this. You'll see this is cotton. You'll notice that we've made uh, an A B C D pattern in uh, cotton over the past. This is a week monthly chart now, so this is long term. But we, this gives us an idea of what's going on. Uh, you know, with uh, apparel. So you'll notice that we're, we've had a uh, ABC pattern form in 2018, and now we've come down over the past six months, and we're coming into very strong support at $70 a pound in cotton. The reason why I believe this will be important is the fact that you'll see the uh, 135 pattern from 2016, 2017, and early in 2019 is when it should occur that that $70 a pound should hold. But going below that, uh, this would be a, a very, very bearish pattern where we're probably heading down to the uh, somewhere around $40 a pound in cotton. And boy, that that is uh, down near uh, the cost of production. So we'll We'll keep an eye on it. These big spikes that you see like we had in 2009, 2010, those, of course, are weather-related. It looks like we're never going to have enough cotton. And as you can see, we always have enough cotton. So we'll uh, keep a close eye on that one. Someone's asked a question about the, uh, I believe it's on Thursday that they have the meeting with the uh, trade thing in China. I don't know what's going on with that stuff, but I don't know if anybody else uh, is either. The market's actually, you know, held up relatively well given where we are you know in the environment of all the stuff going on the, the big thing that I can't get over the fact that nothing's happened in the markets was the fact that uh, you know Russia takes over three Ukrainian vessels that's that's war folks I mean what happened I mean what you know that's something's not right you know that's uh, you know that's really uh, you know something that you really got to pay you know very very close attention to at least uh, the way I look at it from the cheap seats here in uh, Tucson Arizona not cheap here anymore. Anyway, let's take a look here uh, at the long-term picture, the monthly chart here in soybeans. Uh, you'll notice that uh, a few months ago, we went right down to that $8 uh, a bushel level uh, in beans that completed a really nice 78% retracement from the low in 2006. And also you can see that three drive to a top pattern when beans got up to uh, just about $18 uh, a bushel. And remember, folks, that uh, soybeans is one of the few products that has an inelastic demand. That basically means that no matter what the price is, people are going to use it because it's so – uh, it's useful in so many different things that uh, there's just no substitute for it. They can use certain substitutes like in oil. They can use palm oil and peanut oil and canola oil and corn oil and stuff like that. But the protein part of it, which is 80 percent, is really hard to uh, to make that out. Yes, uh, Maria, you're right that the uh, the Tucson and Habitat for Humanity, I'm, I'm aware of that. That's one of the better uh, places to uh, try to help people. It's not too far from the Gospel Mission, which is my favorite place. And the reason why it's my favorite place, I, uh, it's near where I used to, well, I still play poker there. But uh, 
when I used to go there, uh, Spike Lee's uh, brother ran the gospel mission here in Tucson for quite a few years. And in one holiday season, I was in there bringing in coats during the winter season that uh, the folks that uh, – had, my students had donated, and I was carrying them in. I had about 40 coats from Walmart uh, down, uh, you know, down uh, uh, jackets, and I was carrying them in. And he thought I was there to to spend the night. And uh, Spike Lee offered me a cot for the night, but uh, unfortunately, I was able to, or fortunately, I was able to get my own cot. Anyway, let's move on to the next one that we want to look at here on the long-term basis. There were so many I wanted to cover, but I'm not able uh, to do that. Here's one of the really big ones that's going on right now. You'll notice uh, this is the natural gas. Look what happened in 1997 to 2004, folks, that big three drive to a top pattern up there. We got to 16 bucks, 15.79 in natural gas. And you talk about a market that, that moves, it goes from 15 all the way down to uh, 480 and then goes all the way back to uh, 13. I mean, those, and that was right at a 78% level. This market rocks, let me tell you, and it is really tradable. I mean, I've shown a few charts over the past few days on this, but it's a very, very tradable market and certainly uh, looks great. We're gonna have Arch Crawford on, so stay here. He's gonna be with us soon, 877-927-6648. Santa is coming. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives on the line. Arch, how are you doing this morning, my friend? Very well, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. Listen, I posted the uh, charts that you uh, put up today, and I'd like to start out uh, with the stock market, you know, particularly, you know, the S&P and the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ, and then we can cover the uh, Treasury bonds. You want to tell us what you're looking at here, my friend? Uh, yes. Um, we're looking for I mean, the closest one where the 50 is closest to the 200-day uh, in, a, in a negative cross uh, is the NDX, the top uh, hot shot NASDAQ uh, stocks have been uh, the worst. They're the only major index that broke um, the October lows. Now, the others uh, broke the October low close, but not the low in the day. And that's important. Um, do, you, do you take that divergence into effect? I mean, you said it's important. Is that what you're referring to, the, the divergence? Um, to some extent, it may mean that we um, have capitulated. I don't think so yet, and I'm not saying so yet, but it's okay. possible. But we're going to have this uh, death cross of the 50-day to the 200-day very soon on the NDX and maybe a couple of days later on the SPX. The Dow is still pretty far away from it. Why do they call it a death cross, Arch? Uh, because when the 50 goes below the 200, it means uh, a significant amount of time has gone by with the market in decline, and it could accelerate. And um, I would say I don't know what the percentage is, but it does accelerate in a significant number of the possibilities. Uh, who was the developer? Who gave it the name to Death Cross? Do you know by any chance? Lord, no, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, that's <laughs> but, close enough. <laughs> but those are the moving averages that are the most yeah. widely watched uh, okay. by traders and some investors. Okay, uh, Arch, uh, one of the questions that I'm getting from uh, listeners today uh, is the the fact that the Bradley model has not been very effective for the last uh, oh, couple of years. Do you have any, any thoughts about that? Because for many years, that thing was really spot on, but lately the dates have been relatively well, but the overall uh, trend of the market, the Bradley hasn't really picked it up very much. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well... I myself have not been paying that much attention to it the last couple of years. Okay. Um, I did, I did uh, my old analysis using the actual percent changes around these astronomic events, and uh, even my analysis of that has now run out. But um, it nailed um, the t a top for the middle of December last year. Uh, I said that there were two or three things that suggested a top on the 17th of December, and um, not realizing that that was a Sunday, but it was the top day that it ever made in the Bitcoin on the Sunday. Oh. <laughs> the rest of the market topped the next morning early and went down to the end of December, which is very highly unusual because you know that last week is usually like uh, often the best week of the month of the year and uh, it, it continued down till the end of, the, of uh, December last year so that was a specific call on the cycles that I actually calculated similar to the uh, Bradley model only his are theoretical and mine are actual okay now, Sam, uh, I have a question, and that is on the 28th, on Wednesday, tomorrow, we're having a day where there's virtually no aspects listed on the astronomical calendar. Do you have any feeling for that, the fact that there's nothing happening that day? Well, it can be a quiet day with nothing happening, or the market can move a long way on low volume, one okay. or the other, and it's hard to call. Um, I think there's a Mercury... Pluto aspect um, tonight. Let's see where it is. Oh no, it's during the trading day. Uh, 3:16 p.m. today. 
Mercury semi square Pluto. Now that we're having this um, very positive aspect, um, the Sun conjuncted Jupiter um, Monday, early, early Monday morning. It had just turned Monday um, in New York um, at like 1:34 a.m. And that was should have been a very positive element, but then Mercury squared Mars at 3 a.m., and then the Sun semi squared Pluto after the close yesterday, and today we get the Sun Mercury conjunction already passed this morning at 4:15, and then the Mercury semi squared Pluto is at 1:16 um, p.m. Excuse me, I may have said something different earlier. So that suggests some of the worst days, down days, have been with Mercury-Pluto uh, hostile aspects, and some of the best days have been yeah. on Mercury-Pluto positives. That's just uh, a long-term thing that I keep an eye on. It doesn't work. Nothing yeah. works all the time. Well, that's for sure. Sam, we're having a, a question from one of our listeners, and that is, uh, is, has they decided whether Pluto is a planet or it isn't a planet? What was the final uh, verdict on that? That was a total scam, and I think it was because astrologers were saying that Pluto in Capricorn would call the di the dissolution of governments, uh -huh. and of course we've had a few of those already, but um, I think <laughs> there was this big conference of uh, a whole lot of uh, astronomers, and at the end of the day, uh, most of them had left, and 400 remaining made this vote. And it's a ridiculous vote because Pluto has four or five moons. Uh. And no, nothing with four or five moons is not a planet, believe me. Okay. And I wrote, wrote about it at the time, and I think it, it was also presented on one of the astrological um, news service places. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Uh, what's your feeling on the Treasury bonds here, Sam? Okay, that chart is the lower right if you're showing yes. it. The yes, yes, we are. Bond. Um, the chart is extremely weak, but the MACD is beginning to improve and could possibly give a buy. Um, this is a weekly, so it could be two or three weeks or four weeks. Um, normally rates go up to near the end of December uh, so that the banks can make the most people off the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> that makes good sense. <laughs> so I would expect that by the end of this year or the end of December, um, also, the rates have been pulling back with the TNX. I didn't uh -huh. send that chart, but the, the 10 year rates. Um, let's see the chart. Hey, we're going to take a break here, Arch. We'll be right back okay. with you after this break. Okay, stay with us, please. Arch Crawford. Okay, sure. Crawford Perspectives. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. 
Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives, Tucson, Arizona. Arch, uh, there has been some uh, military activity out there in the Crimea where the uh, Russian ships have taken over three Ukrainian ships. That not that an act of war? <laughs> well, when you take over somebody's ships, that's, that's an act of war no matter who you're talking about. Yeah. What, what do you think is going on there? Anything you see astrological that could be causing this? Actually, I haven't looked at it that much, but the, uh, there's still plenty of activity in the sky. Um, one of the things I wrote about in my uh, November newsletter was that, that there's a huge number of planets and, and asteroids and things in the water signs, mm -hmm. and that the water signs tend to uh, promote emotionality mm -hmm. and... Uh, and acts that are not always well thought out. Um, so that's a general thing, and it usually is negative for the markets, and it most certainly is this morning again. So, uh, what, do you, what do you think about what's happening with the thing that happened in Saudi Arabia with the, uh, with the journalist? Uh, any, any comments on that or, or what, what might be going on there? Because I know you have a lot of, lot of folks that follow you over there. I thought maybe you might get some information. What do you think? No, I don't have uh, much information on it. I, I know that the Salman, the, the, the noted leader there right now, was very surprised that the rest of the world's action, uh, surprised that they were taking it so importantly, although I know the, that the U.S. is taking it more seriously because um, he was he was not a journalist, really, but he wrote articles occasionally for uh -huh. Uh, U.S. press. Who was yeah. it? Wasn't, wasn't he a, a nephew of uh, Adnan Khashoggi? I, I made up a thing I, I where I that. said I, re I remember that Adnan Khashoggi was the one of the biggest arms dealers in the world, and he had the largest um, apartment in Trump Tower under the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, boy! Uh, and he was, pro and he had a nephew named with the same name, and it may be the same person. I do not know. Yeah, yeah I, I know that he went. He went. The same person. Yeah. 
he went to school in Terre Haute, Indiana, at Indiana State University. That's where he graduated. So uh, uh, Norm Winsky's also from there. He was the one that alerted me to that. But I remember Adnan Khashoggi because uh, he was uh, very, very much into the news, you know, back in the uh, 70s and 80s when we were going through these oil embargoes and all that other stuff that was uh, going on. Arch, we got a question about the gold market. What do you think of the yellow metal here? Does it have a chance? Um, well... I'm looking at the weekly chart. It's holding under the 200-week moving average so mm -hmm. far. But we do have rising bottoms over the last, what, month and a half, two months? Mm -hmm. So that's the best uh, effect that we have had. Uh, the MACD is uh, positive but weakening now. It's not as much momentum as it was up until, uh, you know, about a month ago it hit a peaked slightly above the 200-day moving average and was unable to close the week there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking forward to it, to getting, to have it acting more uh, positively technically, uh, and I'm not there yet, but I do think you should keep some on hand no matter what. Yeah. Well, it's always been a good a good spot for, for me anyway, is always have a little gold and silver. And speaking of silver, I mean, look, we're down here, you know, right around the 1420 uh, an ounce level here. Boy, it's really acting very, very poorly compared to gold. Do you, any thoughts on that, or whether it's become an industrial metal, or what do you feel about silver? Well, I think silver is used in a lot of electronics. And uh, what's happening to the hotshot stocks are mostly the electronic companies. So I don't know if that has a blowover effect. I imagine it does. Arch, do you see anything really uh, big coming on the astrological calendar here in the next few months, maybe going into early uh, you know, 2019 uh, that you might be able to share with the folks? Uh, yes. You know, I was... A lot of astrologers are looking forward to the Saturn-Pluto conjunctions that begin in early 2020. As a, they, they tend to be um, bad market periods, bad economic periods. But um, I was doing some research on it, and I noticed that the the parallels, which mimic the conjunctions, the it's in the north-south orientation of declination as opposed to the longitude, uh, left-right, north-east-west uh, orientation. And we have already had one of the, con uh, the, the conjunctions in, in declination, and we're going to have another one. I think it's March the 19th, so I'm keeping an eye on that date for um, another hit to the economy and the markets around that date, plus or minus. Well, I'm going to put that on my calendar. Maybe we'll have you on near that date, and we'll see how it's uh, how it's working. Okay. Okay, listen, I want to thank you for being on our show today, and I want to wish you a happy holidays and, and into the new year, and we'll have you on right after the first of the year. So happy holidays to you and Joanna, and we'll uh, hope to see you soon over the holidays maybe. Break a little bread, have a little uh, eggnog. We'd love to. All right. Thanks a lot, Arch. Glad Bye. to have you on the show. You bet. That's Arch Crawford of Crawford Perspectives, Tucson, Arizona, my friend for a long, long time. I met him back in 1986 uh, when I was first writing that book, Astro Cycles. All right. We're going to take a uh, quick look here at one of the other long-term charts that, w that I wanted to show you that I think is relatively important. Uh, that is lumber. I know no one trades it, but it's pretty good as a indicator of what's happening in the economy. And as you can see, during 2018, it's had its worst year uh, in, well, I think in almost forever because we went from six hundred and fifty dollars a cubic yard all the way to cubic foot all the way down to three hundred we dropped in half uh, you'll notice that we've had a pretty good rally here over the past six or eight weeks but it's been very very meager and so that could be an indicator that things are not nearly as good in the construction and uh you know wholesale or uh, 
uh, housing sector because with uh, that big a drop in lumber, folks, that, that really does mean something because uh, there's not much that they can use in place of lumber other than uh, steel and plastic, and lumber is much easier to use. So that might may or may not mean something, but anyway, it's something we ought to keep on our our watch list to see if it's going to uh, if it's going to be the case. And the other one I wanted to bring up because uh, I have so many people ask me why the price of gasoline is not going down. You can see what's happened here uh, in the last two months. We've gone from 2.20 a gallon down to a dollar 36 a gallon, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any bottom in price. And yet nothing is happening at the pumps. Uh, we had a two cent per gallon drop here in Tucson last week, which when you can, when you think about what's happening in the gasoline market, that's that's really a slap in the face to the consumer. But you know, we'll have to wait and see. We'll take a little break. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. AU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. 
Uh, as you can see here, we're getting right down to this uh, 113 level. We just hit uh, 112.99. Uh, that is a head and shoulders pattern. As you can see, the left shoulder and the right shoulder are equal. Uh, it, it's right at a 61% uh, retracement. So keep an eye on this euro in here, folks, because it might hold at this level. At this level, you don't have to risk very much if you're interested in it because anything below 112 uh, 70 would certainly mean this would be a failure, but it's right near an area where it should have, you know, very, very strong support. And it is the leader of the dollar index group, and that dollar index group is still, uh, you know, very, very bullish. It's held all the numbers that we thought that it would. We're trading above 9,700 now uh, in that uh, dollar index, so it would not be surprising to see this euro head and shoulders pattern fail. Anything below 112.70 would certainly be a failure uh, based on looking at the ratios of the Fibonacci summation sequence because that's what we try to look at when we're watching the uh, uh, the amount of, that we have to risk on anything. So uh, just just watch that level very, very closely. We'll, we'll follow it through tomorrow to see what happened with it, to see if it worked or whether it didn't because that's always, always interesting to do. But we will keep a, a close eye on that one for, for sure. Uh, also, we still believe that we're going to be looking at higher interest rates, i.e. lower bonds and notes. We felt all along that this last ABCD rally that we had in the bonds at that 140 uh, 16 level was a very important ABCD structure. And we're trading around 139.29 uh, right now. Not much of a down move, but it still has a slight downward bias since the uh, 23rd of November. Uh, we made 150% retracement, and the, the overall uh, price objective on that first swing would take you down to about that 139 level. So that's what we're watching today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And remember the greatest gift we have is tomorrow. We get it at midnight. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them!